Hey, what's up? Rob Arnold here. And today we're checking out the brand new Colin Richardson preset pack for the STL Tone Hub Amp Sim plugin. Colin is a world famous producer and mixing engineer, most notorious for helping create some of the best guitar tones in heavy metal. And you've definitely heard his work on albums from Machine Head and Fear Factory, Slipknot, Trivium, and even my band Chimera. And we've had the honor of working with Colin on two of our records and even flew over to England and sat in with him on the sessions and got to watch him work throughout the entire process. Uh, and not only is Colin a master of his craft, but he's a super cool guy as well. As some of you guys know, I've been using the STL Tone Hub for a couple years now and pretty much all my stuff. And so as soon as I heard there was a Colin Richardson preset pack coming out, I knew I had to get it. And fortunately, the good guys over at STL Tones hooked me up with an advanced copy. And so let's dive right into it and get riffing. Okay, so here we are in a Pro Tools session, my DAW of choice. And I uh, just have a single mono track here. I'm running just straight into my interface, which is an Apollo Quad, a UA Apollo Quad. And uh, let's bring up the Tone Hub here. So this is what the plugin looks like. I know a lot of you guys know, what, know about it already, but I'm sure a lot of you guys don't. So it's actually pretty cool um, when you when you first purchase it. By the way, you can get it at stltones.com. I think it comes with this core pack here. I haven't used this in a long time, so I've been using the Mark Lewis one for a long time, which is super cool. Uh, but it comes with the core pack, maybe a couple other different ones, and it just comes with a load of, of amp and cab combinations, different mics, all that. I'm gonna talk a little bit more and walk us through all that in a sec, but um, yeah, so you get that uh, and you can just start start off right away, just just ripping. It starts with like, you know, a, a typical signal chain. You can stomp boxes, compressors, overdrives and boosts and stuff like that. Graphic EQs, wah pedal, huh? I guess I never noticed that before, that's cool. I'll have to check that out a little bit. Um, and then, you know, you go into your amp here and this is just like a typical amp. Three EQs and gain, and master all that. Get into the cab, uh, you can adjust the mic. You know, it's just like all, all these, Amps and plugins are, are, are kind of set up this way now where you just have all this flexibility. In fact, I consider it to be a little bit too much. You get the analysis paralysis sometimes because you just have so many options. You can EQ here, you get into more effects, delay, reverb. Um, you know, all this is, is post signal here, chorus, flanger, phaser, tremolo, something there, space verb. So that's cool. So you just, just tons of stuff right out of the box. Uh, and just tons of flexibility. So let's check out this Colin Richardson. So we bring that up and uh, let's just, the very first one, here we go. I'm just bring this up, very first one, number one, which, uh, so you check it out here. The preset is called the Marshall Vintage 30 with a con condenser mic, I'm guessing. Yep, yeah, okay, so it's a 6505 into a Marshall 412 with Vintage 30s. The microphone is an Austrian audio. Are unknown pickup. I don't know why you need that. Wampler. Um, that's an overdrive pedal. So, so that's on there. We'll hear what that sounds like, but just right off the rip, let's hear. <laughs> Ripping right off the bat. Without even uh, messing with anything, just sounds great. Nice and tight, thanks to that gate there. I don't know if that was like the default setting or if I had moved that before, but uh, yeah, look, look, pretty much silent. Wow. So it says it has this overdrive going here. Let's see, see if we hear any difference. Definitely a little difference, a little high end there. Tightened up the low end, I should say. I don't know if it added any yeah, maybe it did there, 5.0, yeah. Anyways, I don't really use boosts a lot. I know a lot of people are blown away by that, but um, I don't know, just, just kind of like amp tones how they are. Or maybe I just haven't been introduced to them in the right way. But anyways, just I guess that's got a little bit going on there by default. So 
whenever I bring up a, a plugin, you know, I just kind of, especially one like this, I just start going through the tones and um, just in their default settings. And I wait for one that, that just catches my attention. And then I start tweaking it from there. So I would just start adjusting these to get it the way uh, I want it. And like if it was going to be a lead tone or something, after I got it the way I wanted it, I'd copy it over to a new bank. And then I'd like add some, some delay, maybe a little bit of verb. And just make like a lead tone like that. Um, but we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. Back to the amp here. So yeah, let's just, just hear a couple different ones. I mean, right off the bat, like I said, that first one just sounds pretty ripping. I could work with that all day. I don't even need any more of the 90 available, 90 presets. So we're not going to check everyone out. But um, again, so when you when you get into this, you know, you may have in your mind, oh, I like this type of head. I like, a you know, a boogie head or I like a Marshall head or, uh, you know, PV. And I like uh, the sound of a Marshall cabinet or I like the sound of a crank cabinet, um, you know, and microphone. Or maybe you don't even think about that. And you just push buttons here until it sounds good. That's cool, too. Um, but this level of flexibility is incredible. So anyways, an EVH Stealth, I've never played on one of those. Let's hear what that. Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden it sounded better than the first one. In my opinion, just a little more high end. So two for two, sounded awesome. Third one. So that's a 5153. Let's see if anything is like changing in here. So they're all, so it's a 412 with vintage 30s. They're all like that. If anything's changing like with the like mic position, let's see. So yes, okay. So that first one back to that is a little closer to the uh, dust cap there. That one didn't change. That one heads out. So yeah, that one went up and out a little bit towards the cone there. So so yeah, mic positions are changing. Still the same thing here. It's trying to, in my mind, eliminate variables just to kind of hone in on what's going on here. Let's go straight to what I would like right away, which is a 6505 or a 5150. I'm cool with either of those. A 5153, though, is the EVH brand that's after 6505. I'm more used to my typical setup, which is just a 5150 or a 5152 or a 6505. Most of the time I'd use a 6505, just the more modern one. Um, but I would want that through a boogie. So 412 standard with a 57 and a 421. That sounds good. Here's oversized. I don't really know personally just the difference between the oversized and the regulars. I thought I was using regulars my whole career in Camira, but some guys have pointed out, no, those are the oversized. So I honestly don't know. Uh, yeah, so there seems to be quite a few of the 6505 through Mesa 412. Let's just try this one. That has a Austrian audio microphone. So exactly as I would anticipate it to sound, just sounds killer. I think it needs a little gloss. So just so I the sound that I'm most used to, I'm going to get a 6505 through a 412, a Mesa 412 with the 57421. So let's see here. Any of these. That sounds a little muffled to me. Hear that open up right away. That difference was huge. And maybe that's the mic position. It's got to be. Let's look, watch that mic position change. Watch the mic. I'm on the first one. Let's switch to that one. It's right in. Tight and badass. Here's this one. Cool. That one sounds like it has a lot more gain. You can't tell because everything's kind of like at at high noon here until you start making adjustments. So it's like the the adjustments are already built into it. And what what's special about this, Colin versus Mark Lewis versus oops Andrew Wade or any of these guys, is that 
these tones were engineered and captured by Colin. He chose these amp and cab combinations. He chose what microphone to use and how to mic it on the cabinet. And so I'm sure he was setting that stuff up and having an engineer hit record on that stuff as they were, um, uh, what's the word? Uh, I forget, capturing those impulses or however that, that whole thing works. I, I still never been able to wrap my head around how any of this stuff is even possible. It's just amazing technology to me that uh, you can just have this, these type of combinations just at, at the push of a button here, you know? Absolutely incredible. But anyways, Colin's amazing ears and experience with all those great bands and getting all those great guitar sounds long before technology like this existed is what makes him um, one of the top dogs in the game and so respected. So anyways, just to have this, you know, just palette of, of things to be able to use from him is, is just incredible. Clean. Let's see what that's like. Obviously a little a little dirty there. Did I see another clean. So here's some pepper spray. I wonder if that's burn my eyes. Not hopeless. Yeah, it's gotta be a slipknot. Poison Valentine. Maybe bull for my Valentine. In the sea. I don't know. Halfway. Maybe that's true. I don't know. So it's got a couple uh presets there. They kind of just name something different. Like dying through. I don't know what that is. Oh, so it's got some some ones with some effects on here. So I'm sure you can go into these effects and adjust all that kind of stuff where we're, that thing is going on, that phaser, or it's a chorus. That's not like oh, let's check out that. Uh, where do we see that wah pedal? How does that thing work? really move though. Auto? <laughs> kind of cool if it like moved, you know? Oh yeah, look at that. All right, so let's, I'm gonna just dial in a tone here. Um, where's a, what's this? Uh, let me turn this off here. Turn off these effects. I don't want the EQ on. Personally, I like to add EQ, additional post EQ like this in my DAW rather than in an amp like this. I just feel I have more control. So after I'd set up my tone here, if I wanted to EQ that further, I would do it with like a plug-in, um, you know, in my DAW here or something, you know, just like that. Uh, just that's me personally. So we're not gonna work on a bunch of EQ. I, I will EQ on the head here, of course. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do right now. So, um, 88, so that sounds great. 6505 through a 412 with the 57 421. 
so what's the difference between that and this guy? That one. <laughs> Seventeen. That's what we're going with. We're going to start there. Seventeen. So what I would do immediately, crank up the gain a little bit. A little more bass. Some mids. Some mids. thing that sound like a uh, Camera tone if, you're, if you happen to know what the Camera tone is does that sound like it I think it does So anyways, you see how fast that was? At least for me, I just got a cool tone that I, that I think is good, just simple. Again, with so many options, you could spend days trying to, trying to really figure it out. But um, as just a final thing here, why don't I just put together a tiny song? I'm just gonna record a quick left and right and uh, throw in some drums and we'll just hear what this tone that I basically got in like one minute from um, you know the sixth starting place with uh, this, these presets here, um, we'll just put together something quick and see. And then even after I put off the song, I put, I put together the song because these are DI tracks. You can always change it instantly to anything else, readjust it, anything. Just just amazing. So um, let's. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create another guitar track. I'm just going to duplicate this. And uh, this is going to be guitar right. Before it's going to be guitar left. We create a click track. 155 sounds good. And we don't hear that because oh, the output. The output. There we go. All right. Let's get a riff going here. I've got one in mind. Let's try this here.
went well. Now I'm going to do the same thing, maybe a little harmony. click. I'm going to create some drums for this really quick. And uh, I'm not going to have you sit through that because it will take a couple minutes. But um, I will talk more about that at the end of this video for a quick sec. If you want to see how I make those drums, I will explain how you can learn that here. So bear with me for one sec. All right, here we go. Let's hear how this sounds. awesome with no no nothing there's no EQ I mean, there's just really nothing going on whatsoever except for this EQ what is this oh that's that one that I threw on there before just to show you guys but there's nothing happening in it so I'll uh, tear it without the drums real quick just so quick <laughs> So yeah, just wanted to show you how simply you can just put something together like that real quick here. Um, and how awesome and how flexible this Colin Richardson preset pack and the STL Tone Hub plugin is, and I recommend it. Um, again, stltones.com if you wanna pick one up for yourself. I know they have like some deals going on or some like uh, bundle things if you put it together. And so anyways, guys, I uh, appreciate you checking out the video. And one last thing I wanted to say here that if you wanted to learn more about how I put songs together like this and just kind of wrap your head around, um, you know, my method, just open your mind to how easy it is to put these things together. If you just kind of have the right tools in your mind to be able to put it together, I've got a recording and songwriting tutorial playlist that you should check out right here. And to take it even further, check out my riffing technique video here of what you should be practicing every day. Put those together and you will up your heavy metal music making game. Check them out, promise. See you on the next one.